Yeah, finally. Thank you. So, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Vasant. Uh, I work at IBM uh, Bangalore. Uh, I am primarily focused on the uh, open power format development, uh, primarily on the um, serviceability, reliability of the system. So, so today's talk is uh, reliable kernel dump with the microcontroller assistance. Uh, here is the quick outline. I uh, will be talking a little bit about uh, the background of what is a dump and you know what is the existing mechanism like a, the kernel dump and um, what are the, the problem with the existing one. Then the quick introduction of the what is the microcontroller we have in the uh, our new power nine systems and I will take you through the how we achieved the reliable kernel dump as well as the uh, the format dump uh, uh, with the microcontroller assistance and I will have the quick demo. Uh, moving on quickly. Uh, so what is dump? Uh, this is the snapshot of the uh, memory and the CPU registers at the time of the uh, dump. Uh, why do you need a dump? Um, uh, it helps in debugging. You don't need to recreate the uh, issues uh, with the help of the dumps uh, and the existing tools. Like we have the uh, the crash tools to uh, debug the uh, the kernel dumps, and the we have the, the, the user space GDB to debug the you know user space uh, uh, issues. Uh, so it's helpful. So what we have in the uh, today, right? Uh, uh, if you are not in the kernel. So uh, we have the kernel dump called uh, kdump. Uh, this is a standard uh, mechanism to get the kernel dumps. Uh, the way it works is uh, you run the production kernel and uh, you set aside the you know, small portion of the memory uh, for loading the, the kdump kernel, which is also called as a standby kernel. Once the you know, production kernel you know, crashes it, um, it kinds of um, uh, uh, loads, uh, hands over the control to the uh, crashed KDAM kernel, which is the standby kernel. The standby kernel helps to uh, capture the kernel dump uh, along with the uh, user space uh, service called KDAM. Uh, it's good, it works across uh, the x86 power and uh, the all other systems. Uh, uh, the infrastructure itself is pretty stable, uh, but um, uh, we do hit uh, number of uh, the uh, issues because of the way it's been done, right? Uh, uh, so uh, it has number of issues like you know uh, the buggy uh, device drivers um, or the some of the DMA issues happening at the time of the crashes uh, or if the you know uh, somebody overrides the reserved memory things like that. And if you are like you know the early system bring up guys like us, then we'll have more funds with the you know having buggy firmware or maybe you know sometime you know buggy chips as well right uh, so uh, uh, we have an alternative solution for the selected IBM power systems called um, firmware assisted dump uh, in this case the um, uh, it works only on the uh, the power uh, power VM which is the IBM proprietary hypervisor and in this case, uh, hypervisor helps us to get the, uh, the dump, uh, but it doesn't work on the, the bare metal Linux systems. Uh, so with that little bit background, so I will now introduce the, uh, our Power9 processor along with the, the, the new microcontroller uh, uh, which helps us to get the uh, dumps. So this is the uh, uh, the Power9 chip. Uh, it has cores and other units, but uh, for the purpose of this talk, uh, I want to focus on the uh, the middle column. Uh, that's uh, the top one is the this uh, the self-boot engine, uh, which is a small microcontroller. What we call in IBM is the uh, Pepe engine, uh, power processor engine, uh, uh, which helps us to uh, boot the power system. Also provides the uh, the various services uh, during run times. Uh, one of that service is uh, the, uh, it is going to help us in ca uh, capturing the uh, dumps. So uh, moving on, uh, this is a, the very, very high level uh, view of the, how the, uh, the open power system looks like and the, uh, the, the boot process. Uh, on the left hand side, we have the service processor, which helps us to uh, manage the systems like power on, power off, get the, uh, the console of the systems. Uh, Moving from bottom to top, we have the, uh, the Power9 hardware. Um, uh, once you power on the systems, the control comes to the, uh, the cell put engine, uh, which runs the small micro code uh, and uh, loads the part of the host boot format to the uh, cache of the one of the core and gives the control to the, uh, the host boot firmware. 
uh, then Hostwood format does various uh, initializations uh, like initializing rest of the course uh, and uh, initializing memory running various diagnostics, uh, uh, the collecting various VPD things like that. And uh, uh, it is just a, uh, uh, the uh, the boot firmware and it gets vanishes uh, uh, the after boot. Uh, uh, of course, there is a small entity of the host boot continues to run in the system, but for the purpose of the this talk, let's not you know, get into those details. Uh, once the host boot firmware um, uh, loads, it gives the control to the the uh, Opal firmware, uh, what is known as a uh, open power abstraction layer, uh, this is a tiny uh, firmware where you know uh, I spend most of my time. Uh, uh, this kind of builds the uh, device tree for the, uh, the host Linux along with the uh, uh, initializing various other things like interacting to the service processor and uh, uh, it during runtime it interacts with the service, uh, the SBE of the uh, you know uh, chip. Uh, then it gives the control to the uh, host boot, host Linux and on top of that you can run the, uh, the, the VMs or the guest which is pretty much similar to what uh, the way we run in the x86 word as well. Uh, so uh, moving on to next slide, uh, with that you know uh, background of the, um, the chips and the systems, now I will uh, introduce like you know how we achieved the um, reliable dump with the, uh, the SBS assistance. Uh, I have like you know three stages on the first stage it is uh, the, okay how do we uh, get the reliability it is just like uh, uh, rebooting this system but preserving the uh, the memory content as well as the uh, CPU register state so that in the next boot uh, the firmware will help us to uh, move the content to the reserved memory so that uh, we can capture the dumps. Moving uh, on the flow wise, you know, once the uh, the Opal and the the host Linux kernel boots, um, we set aside the uh, the memory required to uh, preserve the the firmware dump as well as the kernel dump. Uh, on stage two, uh, kernel registers for the uh, the uh, SB assisted dump. Uh, on stage T, once the Linux kernel crashes or the or the firmware crashes, or of course you can trigger manually as well for the testing purpose. Um, uh, we trigger the dump uh, which goes through kernel to Opal and Opal to um, uh, Opal interrupts the SB saying that uh, look I am crashed you know go and start capturing the dumps. Um, uh, that's what you know the, the slide also uh, the, the uh, picture also talks about the, the red boxes are the, uh, the reserved memories to capture the dump. There are various ways to uh, uh, calculate how much memory required to uh, capture the uh, dumps. Uh, Moving to their stage two, um, at this stage, once the crashes happened, the control came to the the uh, cell put engine. Uh, at this stage, cell put engine goes and preserves this quiescence all the cores and threads, and it starts collecting all the registers data required for the dumps. Uh, then uh, next step, the it again loads the the new host put uh, uh, to the uh, the cache and gives the control. Uh, host boot understands that if this is the uh, the uh, the dump flow, and it has to go and you know uh, move the memory contents to the reserved memory. Uh, once it's done with that, uh, we'll move on to stage three. Uh, at this stage, it loads the Opal. Opal kind of is a firmware. It just exports the uh, preserved uh, memory details and the register data to the Linux kernel. And stage two, um, uh, there's kernel along with the, the KDAM services uh, uh, captures the VM core and uh, the Opal core and stores it in the disks. Or uh, if you configured, uh, it can offload the uh, dumps to the uh, over network to the uh, as well. Um, then you can use the. Uh, this has been implemented on top of the uh, the existing uh, tools, so that you know we don't need to write a fresh tools, things like that. Uh, uh, so we um, can use this the crash is a standard um, uh, tool to analyze the kernel dumps uh, and it's standard across all the architectures. Uh, so we can use the crash tools to analyze the VM core and um, uh, for debugging the Opal firmware cores, uh, uh, it has been generated in the ELF formats uh, so that you know we can just use the uh, GDB for debugging the firmware issues instead of you know uh, writing our own tools and you know maintaining that. So uh, that's the flow. Uh, with that, um, I will 
I will take you to the demo of um, you know how all things uh, uh, works you know rather than having you know too many slides. Uh, uh, this is the you know uh, demo is taken on the IBM uh, Open Power System AC922. Uh, as you can see, this is the power N, being nothing but the power non-virtualized or the bare metal uh, Linux systems, um, as good as you know comparable with you know Linux running on your laptops, right? Uh, it kind of shows that it's a little Indian one, and this has so many cores, things like that. These are Power 9 systems. Yeah. Yeah, one important thing is, you know, the bit of um, the kernel, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the config options, uh, you have to uh, enable the FA dump is equal to on option. Um, on here and um, you have to configure the crash kernel uh, with the, you know uh, the memory required to dump it. Uh, at this stage, you know uh, uh, it's registered for the uh, the firmware assisted dump. And note that you know for the purposes of the demo, we, I'm doing it manually. But um, if you configure it, uh, you know properly, um, uh, it just works. You don't need to do any of these uh, manual things. Um, this is on the console, so uh, it's kind of mixed the both the uh, the Opal generate the firmware generated looks, uh, as well as the you know uh, the the dump locks. So this is kind of you know if you have a serial console, so this kind of shows you know um, the you have registered and what the memory ranges you know where it is going to uh, preserve the memory details. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, we export the 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 firmware logs to the Swiss FS. Um, so this kind of confirms that you know uh, we have registered for the uh, the dump. Uh, at this stage, this is the manual way of triggering the dump, and uh, 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 note that there is uh, two back traces. Uh, uh, one coming from the first one is coming from the Linux kernel, and second one is coming from the uh, the Opal firmware. And uh, I will show you now once the dump system boots back uh, uh, for, through GDB. I will show you now both one. At this stage, you know we started rebooting the system, so it collected all the uh, register states, and these are the, some of the. Uh, the early logs from the firmware, uh, post boot firmware, and it's at this stage you now it is trying to uh, it kind of moved all the you know, uh, data, and um, this is the petit boot uh, prompt, which is you know comparable with you know the grub prompt what we had. Note that you know one important thing is um, this is the fresh boot, unlike the K dump where the you know control goes to the 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 standby kernel. This is the fresh boot of the kernel, uh, so. Um, you know, we don't see any of the issues that we saw in the uh, KDAMP case. Yeah, at this stage it's booted fine. Um, again, for the purpose of the demo, you know, I have disabled the KDAMP services so that, you know, I can manually show the how to, you know, uh, the offload the dumps and uh, copy the, uh, the, uh, the Opal dumps. Um, Uh, the proc VM core is where the uh, the, the VM core, the Linux kernel uh, core gets generated. Then we allow the KDAM services to offload them. Now I will show you know how to use the. Uh, Crash. The Opal core is you can it's a the ELF format. You can just copy it, or the you know KDAP service will you know take care of you know downloading that to the disks. This is a standard you know same um, the the crash tool. Uh, once you have the the VM core file with the VM Linux, you can just you know do the, uh, the all the traces. Yeah. So this is the uh, the uh, the back trace of the kernel. What we saw you know uh, uh, before crashing. Uh, 
I, in the interest of time, you know, I'm just keeping rest of the commands and, you know, I'm just moving to the, the, the Opal dump parts. So, uh, we copied the Opal core. Uh, this is just, you know, you just run the GDB on the, uh, with the, 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 the Opal's uh, firmware uh, ELF file and the, the dump file. Then you just do, you know, execute the regular uh, uh, GDB commands. Uh, you can see the you now back traces uh, of the the Opal core. Okay, all right. Let's get back. And some of the advantages of this method is uh, you now um, uh, this is the first of kind, you know, where we can get the both the kernel dump as well as the firmware dump in the first instance. And um, because we use the firmware resistance and the the next kernel is booted freshly, we don't see the 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 issues we hit in the, the KDUMP cases uh, and it's been, uh, we have been worked on top of the existing um, the tools like uh, Crash and GDB so that, you know, uh, we don't need to uh, reskill the service engineers also, you know, lower, you know, uh, um, uh, we don't have the, you know, maintenance overhead. This is the current set. Most of the patches are out in the uh, mailing list. Uh, we are hoping to get in the upstream in a, a month or so. Uh, this is the uh, bunch of people who worked on the uh, this project along with me. Um, yes, I'm done. Thank you. Questions? Uh, thank you. As a question. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Vasant. Um, unfortunately, just because we're running a little bit behind schedule.